Just one more example. When we, when the, when the governor sent down the last arc light. Um, mm -hmm. Agreement, yeah, the like deal. Yeah, yeah, the bagel um, agreement. He was, he was, they were getting upset because of questions that the senators posed to the developers. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted a little bit more. Well, that's a good thing. Why would this legislature be on the side of the government and the governor be supporting the, the lime tree uh, people? You would think that the, the legislature and the executive branch would work together and say, well, if the legislature wants more for the people, why isn't that a good thing? The executive branch now goes back to the table and says, well, they denied your first, your first attempt. Here's what you can do to make this deal sweeter and to get us um, mm -hmm. the Virgin Islands a better shape. Instead, That's you have- That's what you would like to see. Exactly, happen. instead yeah. you have the executive branch now defending the contract with the contractor. Who are they fighting against? Not the legislature, they're fighting against the people of the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that we would like to really look at. And we're not always gonna, gonna agree, mm -hmm. um, but I think that we'll have a great working relationship. I mean, theoretically, since you're coming out of the legislature, mm -hmm. Senator, that should help. Well, well, I, I would underscore exactly what Albert said, because you have to understand the function of each, each mm -hmm. branch of government, and you have to have respect for it. Mm -hmm. You pointed an example there where the governor has said on more than one occasion, mm -hmm. if you, even if you override it, I'm not going to implement it. Mm -hmm. He said that. When we voted to increase the uh, bond funding for GERS by a hundred million, he said if the bonds were floated, he wasn't going to give the money to GERS. They could go pack a lunch. So it's, it's impossible for you to believe that you can have a working relationship with people if you have no regard for their role mm -hmm. and no respect for their positions. Mm -hmm. And there are at least uh, six of the returning members of the legislature mm -hmm. with whom I have worked. And one thing that I know every single person would say mm -hmm. is that I am able to work with people. As a member of the minority, knowing that you need votes from the majority to pass mm -hmm. any measure, mm -hmm. whether I have a, whether we are, we had an, a disagreement on some issue yesterday or the day before, I come to each person and I say, "This is the idea that I have. Mm -hmm. Will you support it?" Mm -hmm. That's how you. That's what. That's how you regard people mm -hmm. in a system of checks and balances. The governor goes around and makes this big production. He has, you know, he has signs with my face on his signs. <laughs> oh, and yeah. No. That I say no each time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the checks and balances. I'm not supposed to be a yes man. When you come and say you're going to put a pipeline under the sea of uh, St. Croix and it's going to be two miles and you're going to allow tankers to come into that area with five million barrels of oil and if there is an accident, you have to also get help from Puerto Rico. You have to wait for them to mobilize and come to St. Croix. You can't expect me to say yes to that with a day a half a day's hearing, mm -hmm. no public input. So if you have respect for the role of the legislature, you're going to be successful right. in working with them. We were talking about GRS a little while ago, and this is the opportunity for you to um, reiterate to folks what your plan is about. Now, um, I've heard you speak in several forums, mm -hmm. um, Albert, and you said that your your plan for shoring up the government employees' retirement system is three-pronged. You're going to lower the unfunded liability, secure payments to retirees, and lower the cost of the retirement system to the government. You also had several objectives under that, and you identified five funding sources. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? So I, the funding sources I think are the, the most important and we, you know we didn't come up with this thing just like pie in the sky. We actually sat down with our team, we reviewed a lot of the uh, studies that were done um, by the, the GRS uh, over the years. Uh, we reviewed the studies from the task force that were submitted and came up with some things that we think were important like you said. And the number one thing is to make sure that we don't reduce the annuity, the payment of people who are already retired. Mm -hmm. The further away from retirement you are, mm -hmm. um, the, the longer you have to plan for mm -hmm. it. So there's a lot of education piece in our 
in our uh, plan as well too. But the five funding sources, the most impactful funding source are distilleries. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because we get the rum cover over. So as we produce, we get all of that money back. We get two grabs at it. So adding a distillery is number one uh, in terms of, of generating revenue. With a revenue of even $80 million a, a year, we would have enough money to finance a $600 million bond to the GRS system. There's two grabs at, at the rum cover room money. You get one grab because you actually sent the rum. Right. And then we split the rest of the rum that's produced by other islands besides Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. um, we get a piece of that too. So if Puerto Rico produces 60% of the rum um, that's sent, for instance, they get 60% of that extra money. Mm -hmm. Well, they've been doing the calculation wrong for years so treasury actually owes us probably a hundred million dollars um, getting that calcu calculation and getting a hundred million dollars would also be a new um, source of revenue they wouldn't have to pay it back to us immediately they could pay it mm -hmm. to us over time but it would guarantee a new s revenue source to either fund a bond or to put money into the system sports gaming is another one we have this 120 million dollar fiber optic cable that we invested in that mm -hmm. really hasn't given us anything except better Netflix <laughs> um, so if we use sports gaming um, as as a new opportunity for the Virgin Islands, we can then uh, be able to, to get money um, that will be d designated for the GRS by having sports gaming companies in the Virgin mm -hmm. Islands. The, the gasoline and the gasoline tax is something that we've been debating for years and we were almost there at one point but we couldn't come to an agreement and we kind of lost that opportunity. Mm -hmm. We could still go back if we get the refinery pumping again. And then finally, I think the most impactful um, for the future earnings of the Virgin Islands would be our cannabis research and patent registry. So the cannabis industry in the United States is a $24 billion industry. By establishing a research center in our technology park, there are certain strains, uh, oils, uh, topicals, different things that you're, they're extracting from this botanical now mm -hmm. that can be patented. Every time that thing sells, that product, whatever it is, if it's mm -hmm. the oil, every time it sells, the Virgin Islands would get a piece of that money from okay. the patent. Um, this is a huge opportunity for us because it's just like Viagra or McDonald's or Kentucky. Every time a piece of chicken sells, Colonel Sandals gets mm -hmm. money. Why would they come to the Virgin Islands? Because we're not going to give them a 90% tax break. We're going to give them a 60% tax break. But that's a huge tax break mm -hmm. anywhere else. And that, the rest of the, all of that money that's generated from taxes would be another funding source for the GRS. The, the thing about um, the, the, uh, our administration coming into office is about having the ability to come out and lead. Before we started talking about medical marijuana research, everybody else was quiet. The MAP had four, MAP administration had four years, they never commented on it. The same thing with the tuition bill. But it's a touchy topic still for some people. But even the GRS is a touchy. When we started talking about the GRS, people told us we were crazy to create a plan. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna lead in, the, in anywhere and you're gonna move people forward, you're gonna have to take risks. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why they call it a vision is because only you can see it. Leadership is being able to convince a group of people that this vision actually exists and that we should march forward toward it. That's leadership. We, had, we don't have that in the Virgin Islands. We have people who are more concerned with being reelected than moving the people forward. Mm -hmm. I'm here for one reason, to fix it. And that's the only reason. So Trigenza and I, we're going to be doing the things that put the Virgin Islands on a new course, on a course towards finally resolving some of those, these lifelong problems. Mm -hmm. And um, that starts with people. All right. Oh, we're going to take a little break. We're going to circle back to a few of the topics that we spoke about. You're watching uh, our News 2 election special sponsored by the Brian Roach campaign. We'll be right back. On the eve of this critical election, let us add clarity to what Albert and I mean by change course now. It's a recognition that the Virgin Islands has been on the wrong path for far too long. It is a commitment to a purposeful government that actually produces results. It has nothing to do with delaying or stopping our recovery from the storms. We value the recent progress made by our disaster volunteers and the resources secured by our government to include the delegates to Congress and the members of the legislature. 
Change course now is not just about this administration or an election. It is about not letting our government do the same thing over and over while expecting a different result. That is why our neighbors from Frederickstead to Bordeaux and Coral Bay say that change just can't wait. We will hold ourselves accountable to the people of the Virgin Islands. Vote number five to change course now towards a brighter Virgin Islands for all of us. Paid for by Brian Roach for Governor and Lieutenant Governor. Hi, this is Tregenzo Roach. In these final days of the election, you may have heard false, desperate advertisements sponsored by our opponents that I have been against the betterment of my friends and family on St. Croix. As a senator, I have had to say no, along with my colleagues, when we believe the governor has abused his power or has made decisions that rob opportunities from hardworking residents. For example, I have said no to the governor appointing his brother as Port Authority Executive Director, cousin to the Port Authority Board, and sister-in-law to the WICO Board instead of other more qualified Virgin Islanders. I have said no to purchasing executive limousines instead of buying new ambulances for our hospitals or first paving the roads in Frederickstead. I have said no to raising commissioners' salaries ten to twenty thousand dollars higher while shortchanging deserving teachers at Ricardo Richards and police officers who patrol the streets in Christianstead. I did vote no on the Lime Tree Agreement because the governor forced us into a forty million dollar payday loan from a billion dollar company pushed us to sell 300 acres of our precious Crucian soil at $10,000 an acre without an appraisal. And I said no to a deal that gave folks on St. Croix 17.5% less of refinery income than we were promised in the previous agreement. As leaders, we are measured not solely by our flowery words, but also our deeds and record as well. I proudly stand on my three terms as your senator over the Matt Potter's new 90 days of busy work. On November 20th, the Brian Roach team asked for your continued support and vote because change can't wait. Thank you. This is Trigenzo Roach, your candidate for Lieutenant Governor on the Brian Roach team. As a senator in the Virgin Islands Legislature, I have been pleased to support many measures on behalf of the people of St. Croix. I voted yes to $100 million in Garvey Bonds financing for road repair work, which the governor let sit from 2015. I voted yes to making St. Croix the sports capital of the Caribbean by providing $20 million in financing to create a state-of-the-art sports facility at the Pauli Joseph Stadium. The governor has let it sit from 2014, and what is there now is a stadium in ruins shrouded in dirt. I voted yes to $3.5 million to dredge the Schooner Bay Channel so that Gallows Bay could become a state-of-the-art facility and attract the small luxury liners. I voted yes to establishing the Bachelor of Nursing program at the University of the Virgin Islands so that St. Croix students would not have to travel to St. Thomas to complete their degrees. I voted yes to acquiring the property adjacent to Government House to create a proper governor's residence and to end the governor's wasteful spending of hundreds of thousands of dollars for accommodations at the Ritz-Carlton and private villas. I voted yes to constructing urgent care centers for the people of St. Croix in the absence of a proper hospital, and I voted yes to override the governor's veto of that legislation. Vote Brian Roach, number five on your ballot, to end MAP's tyranny and to create a Virgin Islands for all of us. Paid for by Brian Roach for governor and lieutenant governor.
Welcome back. You're watching our News 2 election special sponsored by the Brian Roach campaign. Now, earlier uh, we had talked about like quite a few topics, including clearing up some issues about this debate situation, the free tuition policy, as well as uh, some of the things that the governor was uh, said he was afraid would happen if we installed a new administration. We also talked about GRS. Now, um, you mentioned the Lime Tree deal um, earlier, uh, Senator Roach. You voted no to the deal. Something that Governor Mapps said would bring back jobs to St. Croix, and that was his pitch. You know, he just wants this to to operate so that he could bring back jobs and revive the St. Croix economy. What are your ideas for 